siblings, fellow mathematicians, we're going to take a look at how to evaluate another limit with an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. Now to get started, you always want to check that first. So let's plug in x as negative 5. All right, and it's easy to see that your numerator becomes 0. Let's check the denominator. Plug in x as negative 5. You'll get negative 5 squared, positive 25 times 3, positive 75. Plug in x as negative 5 here. You'll get negative 65 minus 10, negative 75. Your denominator is going to evaluate to 0 as well. All right, now what this suggests, the indeterminate form of type 0 over 0, is that we can possibly try to eliminate the indeterminate form by going through one of our four standard algebraic tricks. And the one that seems to apply here, we're going to try to factor both maybe the numerator and denominator. Now the numerator, that's really easy to factor. You can just pull out the greatest common factor, which is 2. It's going to be a little bit more work to factor the denominator, which is where we're going to focus our time. So let's start that. We're going to factor 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. And the method I like to use is called the AC method. We're going to first identify the values of A, B, and C. A is 3, B is 13. C is negative 10. And we start by multiplying A times C. All right, and that's going to come out to negative 30. And we also look at the B term, which is just 13. All right, now if this is going to factor, we try to take these two numbers and find integers that multiply to AC, but add to 13. So think what multiplies to negative 30 and then adds to 13. I think 15 and negative 2 would work. They're going to multiply to negative 30, and when you add them, you get 13. Now, how we actually use those integers is splitting apart the middle term here and then trying factoring by grouping. So we're going to keep the first term, 3x squared. We're going to use 15 and negative 2 to split apart the middle term, 13x. So we'll write that as plus 15x. minus 2x, and then minus 10. And what we do now is try to factor in pairs. That's called factoring by grouping. All right, so it looks like here you can factor out, looks like a factor of 3 and x. And it looks like that's going to leave you with x plus 5. And then from your last two terms, it looks like you can factor out negative 2. All right. And if you do that, it looks like you're going to be left with x plus 5. And here, since they both have a factor of x plus 5, you can factor that out and you get your factorization. You have 3x minus 2. times x plus 5. And that is most of the work for this question. Just comes down to really factoring here. Now, of course, this is a harder factorization, sometimes a little bit uh, difficult for some Calc 1 students. But as long as you're on top of your factoring skills, you should be fine. So let's plug that in up here. We just factored the denominator. All right, so let's write that in. We have factors 3x minus 2. And then times x plus 5. And the numerator, we're going to factor out positive 2. And write that as 2 times x plus 5. All right, and here, before we cancel, worth pointing out, since x is approaching negative 5, we never actually let x equal negative 5. We only get closer to negative 5. So that way you can go ahead and cancel 
those two factors of x plus 5 out, and we're left with a really simple limit, the limit as x approaches negative 5 of 2 divided by 3x minus 2. At this point, there's no indeterminate form, so you can just plug in x equal to negative 5, and it looks like you're going to get negative 15 minus 2. Looks like you get negative 17 in the denominator, giving us a limit here of negative 2 over 17. And that's it. Really, this question is really just a factoring question in disguise. And again, as long as you're on top of your factoring skills, this problem should be really simple. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe.